The Call of Duty Zombies Iceberg. This is something from the time I'm recording this now, I haven't seen anybody make a video about, which is pretty crazy because I'm surprised no one has. This is one of the most interesting things uh, right now in Zombies because these iceberg lists have been blowing up lately. So I decided to give a month of my soul and life away to actually research a, a COD Zombies Iceberg and compile it all, research search it all and try the best I can to get everything right and uh, here we are I decided to make one because why not it'll be really fun. And iceberg lists have been something I've enjoyed looking at and watching videos on but you're probably wondering well most people will know but for those who don't what is an iceberg list? Icebergs are a series of trivia and information about a certain subject in which the information given gets more obscure and not as common and usually tends to be more creepy the further down it goes. Each iceberg can be about many different things, such as the Super Mario 64 iceberg by the man himself, Mish Koz, which is literally what I got inspiration from. Much like an iceberg in real life, there is always more than there appears to be. This iceberg, believe it or not, is about Call of Duty Zombies, which should be no surprise. In similar fashion to what Mish Koz did in his Super Mario 64 iceberg, Iceberg, I'm gonna have five perk icons here and if all five perks are on screen whilst I'm talking about a certain thing on the iceberg then I am 100% sure that what I'm saying is true and if it's just one then I've absolutely got no idea and I'm just guessing. <laughs> this is probably gonna be a long one so if you find yourself enjoying this then give the video a like or subscribe. Be sure to comment your thoughts on this iceberg and if there's anything I got wrong feel free to correct me in the comments. Sit back, grab a drink or a snack and let's dive into the deep dark. Elemental Knife. The Elemental Knife was a glitch in Origins in which you could upgrade your knife to have the same effects of the one inch punch. This however is patched in Black Ops 3 Origins, but in terms of Black Ops 2, you can still do it. Factions. I genuinely tried not to laugh while saying that because Factions has became such a meme in the community and it was meant to be an exciting arrival in Black Ops 4 Zombies in which you'd be able to choose from one of multiple factions to join and it was always said by Jason Blundell that there would be some sort of competitive element. It was always said that this would be added but it never was with no explanation given. Misty is Dempsey's daughter. There was a point in Zombies where people were convinced that Misty from the Victus crew was in fact Dempsey's daughter, you know, Tank Dempsey. The only real reason is because of Misty and Dempsey Dempsey having the same kick-ass kind of personality and also Dempsey mentioned that he has a daughter in one quote and because of this for some reason people thought that this was enough evidence to believe in this theory and, and create it in the first place. Dempsey said this in 1945, Misty is at least in her early to mid 20s in transit which is set in 2025. I don't think I need to explain this one more. The Flesh. The Flesh was a group in the COD Zombies universe which believed that they would be able to survive by eating zombie flesh. I mean someone was gonna have the idea at one point right? Samuel Stuhlinger was a part of this group for a while and this is how he ended up hearing Richthofen in his head. 935 Origins. Quoting the timeline here, May 10th, Maxis forms group 935, an international organization dedicated to the study of element 115. Maxis tells his scientists they represent the future of technological advancements and will be pioneers of human discovery. The group swears to work in secrecy from their respective governments. As Maxis says, we cannot afford to let this power fall into the wrong hands. Alcatraz Lab. In the zombie storyline, Richtofen has a secret underground lab in Alcatraz prison, which is obviously where Mob of the Dead is set. This was where Victus, aka the transit 
crew were cryo-frozen for later, and this played a pretty big role in the story. Shangri-La on Mars It has always been a big debate in COD Zombies history as to whether the map Shangri-La is actually set on Mars. Now people believe this is the case due to them saying that Shangri-La was actually habitable and that the Vrilya were the planet's race that lived there. When you enter Eclipse mode it is thought that you go back to when Shang was still on Mars from the Shang on Earth. When Brock and Gary found it whilst on their adventure, which was on Earth, they got stuck in Eclipse mode and were thrown back to when it was on Mars. Then they got stuck in the loop. This whole thing honestly has way more to it and by that I mean way more. It is a huge COD Zombies rabbit hole and it could honestly merit its own video. Easily one of the better rabbit holes in COD Zombies and one of the more fun ones to explore. I really enjoyed researching this one. Apothecon Servant Upgrade. Back when Black Ops 3 came out we were blessed with the masterpiece that is Shadows of Evil. People were convinced, including myself, I'm guilty, that there was a way to upgrade the wonder weapon. This was only possible on the DLC 4 map which was Revelations, but not on Shadows of Evil at all. I feel as if there are probably a few people that still think this is possible. <laughs> I like to think that this is the zoo level of the COD Zombies community. Nikolai's Wives Whenever you play as Ultimus Nikolai, he'll mention the several wives he's had multiple times. He makes several quips about them, comparing them to the zombies a lot of the time, but however, it's been revealed that he only sadly ever had one wife who died tragically on June the 24th during the German advance made into the Soviet Soviet Union. Ever since then he turned to vodka to deal with the grief and due to the 115 brainwashing he was subjected to, the other wives were simply fabricated. Keeper's Language In Shadows of Evil and other maps in Zombies, there are a variety of ciphers with characters and symbols of the Keeper language. This is its own fully fleshed language and is used for multiple ciphers in the series. And just remember, this is an actual thing you can go and and learn and be able to read, which is not only cool as hell, but also is really good for lore and world building in general, since if you put the time in, you could actually learn and solve these ciphers yourself. Ammo-matic. Ammo-matic was a perk that costs 500 points and upon purchasing gives the player the maximum amount of ammunition for both of their weapons. Essentially this was just a free max ammo. It was meant to appear way back in Shinonuma and Darice back in World of War, but however it was strangely removed with no explanation. The Nuketown Shelter. In the Nuketown Zombies map back in Black Ops 2, if you knife to the bunker you would actually hit Marlton from Transit start talking. He was hiding in there since he was at the test site when the outbreak happened. The community fixated on this bunker and tried many, many ways to either get in the bunker or to set Marlton free. Now, I remember this. I used to watch videos about it and read up on it and stuff. This was one of those rumours that I'd hear in school going round. And that is the case with a lot of things on this list. Blank painting. One of the old debates of zombies. The blank painting can be found in Kino de Toten in Black Ops 1 when you enter the Mule Kick room. You'll actually see paintings on the wall of the four Ultimus characters, the Mad Lads themselves, and then also a painting of a silhouette. The common theory was that it was Maxis since he was one of the only other well-established characters in zombies at that point, but it was revealed later on in Black Ops 4 to be Primus Nikolai. Arthur. Also dubbed a and well known by the community as the nickname Leroy, in reference to Leroy Jenkins, is the giant you see in Buried which became one of the fan favourite characters in Zombies. He was first introduced in Buried and later on when the timeline came out, it was revealed that Arthur was his actual name and was a loyal servant to the Wolf King himself in Der Eisendrache. Sadly for our boy Arthur, he was thrown across time due to temporal displacement and then ended up in the jail cell where we end up finding him in Buried. Der Eisendracher Raven. In Der 
Tracker, if you look just above Mule Kick, you can find a lone raven that's just perched upon a wall and it can actually be shot and killed. The community thought that there was something more to this raven than meets the eye, but we still to this day have no idea if this raven is really anything more than just some extra detail on the map. Considering this raven isn't on last gen consoles, aka Xbox 360 and PS3, it's probably nothing. Space Dog. This was easily one of the more humble and funnier myths back in the day of Black Ops 1 on Moon. Legend had it that you could find a dog within the map with a space helmet on and everybody referred to this thing as Space Dog. It wasn't however fulfilled until Zombies Chronicles on Moon when they added an actual Space Dog easter egg in the game which is good of Treyarch to do. Hitler Boss. Back in World at War and Knocked, it was an old rumour I remember hearing that if you reached a certain round, most people would usually say round 50, you would be able to fight a zombie Hitler boss. I don't think I need to clarify this, but it obviously wasn't true, but it's one of the most OG rumours ever in zombies. But for real though, this one was on par with the knife the box X amount of times, do this and that, and you'll get a ray gun every time, but we'll get to that one soon. <laughs> Noah J Firebow Tutorial. Noah J246, the man himself, made a tutorial for all of the elemental bows except the Firebow and still hasn't to this day. This is a, a spicy meme in the zombies community. But seriously though, I, I need to know how to make the Firebow. Ray gun every time. I told you we'd get to this one. This was another old World at War rumor, which I remember trying to do so many times. I am guilty for this one. It was said that if you perform a certain routine, and this varied from whichever rumour you would hear and whoever you heard it from, if you approach the box and then do things like shoot the hinges, open the box and then knife it, and some kind of variation between them things, you would get a ray gun or whatever the map's wonder weapon was every single time. <laughs> this also eventually became a pretty good meme in the community because of how dumb this one really really is. Bus Route B. I feel like this one would have been very interesting to see it actually play out in the map transit, but Bus Route B was one of the most memorable myths, much like the ray gun every time rumour. This came in transit and it was said that the bus would have a different route it could take as opposed to the normal route you would take whenever you go on a playthrough of transit. This honestly did sound like some kind of easter egg Treyarch would have had up their sleeves at the time, and I did believe it, but this turned out not to be true. Kino is DLC 4. So I guess some people thought that Kino was meant to be secretly DLC 4 for Black Ops 1. Now I haven't been able to find anything about this and I'll put it down to harmless speculation. Black Ops 2 ranking system. There was actually a secret ranking system in Black Ops 2 and it worked in a very strange way. There was no way to get XP for it and it just depended on smaller factors in game. You could actually end up ranking down as well if you didn't play long enough. Kino tapes. In Kino de Toten, when you've finished pack-a-punching, sometimes you'll be teleported to a random room for a few seconds at a time, an example of that being Samantha's room, and there will be a film reel that you can pick up. These can be played on the projector at the pack-a-punch room, and will give you some story info. Mr. T Lexify 1 million subscriber special. The absolute mad lad Mr. T Lexify has had a 1 million subscriber special video and has not released it to this day. Will he ever release it? Who knows. BO1 remakes are direct ports. Not really sure what they mean by this, but I'm assuming this is speculating about how the Zombies Chronicles remakes are just direct copy and pastes with improved graphics and textures, but even I don't think that is true. Although it wouldn't really surprise me. Treyarch probably do save an awful lot of resources 
was just making these remakes, so there probably is a lot of stuff that has been copied and pasted. The man on the poster. In the Ascension poster, there is a mysterious man that is on it, stood with Dempsey, Nikolai, and Takio. There has been a huge debate about this for years and years as to who it is, but our questions were finally answered in a Zombies Chronicles radio. The man on the poster is Dr. Gersh, Golden Ray Gun. A Zombies YouTuber named Jimbathy made a fake Golden Ray Gun video in 2013, claiming how you could get a Golden Ray Gun by doing a certain Easter egg. Fast forward to 2018, and the Golden Ray Gun can actually be obtained in Blackout. Jimbathy actually made a bunch of fake Zombies videos, and they add that charm, and they really do parody those old rumours, such as the Hitler boss and things like that. It really is part of the fun when it comes to Zombies. Black Ops 3 Egypt map. There was speculation of a map set in ancient Egypt, but this ended up never happening. There is, however, a custom map with that very concept. And it was widely theorised that this Egypt map would be where the Victus crew were in the buried cutscene. Revelations easter egg was bugged. I guess this is talking about how there was just a lot of bugs in Revelations during the easter egg. As to whether or not they are fixed is beyond me, but if Gord Crovey's easter egg still isn't solved, then these ones probably won't be. The Great War. This was what the whole direction of Black Ops 3's zombies story was focusing on, or at least building up to. This was said to be the huge war between the Keepers and the Apothecons that is set in stone in the zombie storyline, and Primus are said to fight this battle. We never actually got to see the Great War play out sadly, but it would have been so cool if we did. Richtofen worked with the Illuminati. It was confirmed in the zombies timeline that Richtofen was in the freaking Illuminati since August the 30th, 1925. Transit failed due to limitations. Transit overall was a very ambitious map, and back when Black Ops 2 was coming out on the Xbox 360 and the PS3, Treyarch could not put all of these features they wanted to put in due to hardware limitations at the time. This is why the fog is there, and there are so many problems with Transit. Whilst I don't think that all of Transit's wrongdoings are because of the limitations, I do think this was a huge factor for Transit not being very well received. Brecky and Dracon in BO4. Or is it pronounced Dracon? I don't really know. <laughs> In the Zombies trailers before BO4 released, the Bricky and Dracon, which were both beloved weapons by the community, could be seen. When the game released, they were gone. Why? They were probably just placeholder weapons. Candelier. This was a cut perk from Black Ops Zombies, and this was found in the game files. The best guess for this perk is that it would be like the Bandelier perk from BO4, or dare I say, Exo Stockpile. Oh my god, I can't believe I actually wrote that in the script. <laughs> We're just gonna move on. <laughs> Black Ops 4 Fake Leaks. I don't really know what this is trying to say, but I'm guessing it's just the simple fact that there were a lot of leaks for Black Ops 4, and most of them were fake. Blundell Morse Code Blinking. In one of Mr. Rufflewaffle's lightning round videos with Jason Blundell, people noticed that Blundell was blinking an awful lot and jokingly said that this was Morse Code. With further investigation, it turns out he actually was communicating in Morse code, truly a man of many secrets. Chainsaw in Black Ops 1. The Sabretooth Chainsaw was supposed to be in Black Ops 1 Zombies. What we know about it is that it has animations, stats, and an untextured model. It had a magazine size of 999 and 999,000 in reserve. There was even a pack-a-punched version of this thing, as well as another model called the Sabretooth 360. This was probably its pack-a-punched counterpart. Killing 
ender pig. In the map 5, when you go down to the lowest level to turn on the power, in one of the rooms you can see a pig that has been suspended by a cloth hung up on the ceiling. The pig is alive and the player can kill it. There was a lot of talk about this pig in which killing it would raise the difficulty or make zombies run faster or increase the zombie count and many many more of these rumours which never ended up being true. Shadows of Evil Easter Egg. I'm guessing this is talking about how many people thought that there was a super easter egg on the map Shadows of Evil. They were wrong. Smoke Bomb. These were cut content from Mob of the Dead. What they would have done is beyond me. Maybe just cloud the zombies vision so you can make a quick escape but I have no idea. The giant is in France. This was a small theory I remember hearing but it's not true and I think this ended up becoming more of a meme. Exploding Monkeys. Damn, some of these titles sound very strange. <laughs> in Shangri-La, if you spawn in and press a certain combination of buttons, the monkeys in the map will burst into red paste. Why? It really makes you wonder how many of these small things we've missed in the older games. Hellhounds in Verrucked. Hellhounds were supposed to be in Verrucked at first and even five, but didn't make it into the map and were instead implemented in Shino Numa. Richtofen's Head Wonder Weapon. In the game files for Black Ops 2 on Mob of the Dead, there is a mysterious severed head that looks a lot like Richtofen and is referred to in the game files as Severed head, as well as zomb underscore head. It was speculated to be a wonder weapon or a replacement for the meat you throw in grief due to its throwing animation. Buried based on a real location. The map buried is set in Africa, but as to where the map is actually based on in real life is different. Buried is based on an old western town named Calico Town, a real life abandoned town. There were many old myths about a woman named Lucy who haunted the place. Very similar to the ghost in Buried that haunts the house. Songs predict storyline. The songs of Call of Duty Zombies are amazing on their own, but for those story nuts like myself, there was a lot of talk of the songs actually predicting the story, or at least referencing it. One example is the lyrics, Father, why have you forsaken me? From the song Lullaby of a Dead Man. These lyrics seem to hint towards Samantha's feelings to towards Maxis neglecting her for his work and not noticing the experiments that Richtofen actually put her through, which subsequently got her into this whole mess. This was the easter egg song for Verrucked, which was two maps before Doris, and there are many more examples of this. Black Ops 1 fake player numbers. The player count for Black Ops 1 has been deemed strange. The player count has been showing extremely high and low numbers that just don't add up at all. This seems to be some kind of bug. Owner of Zombies World Records faked high rounds. I could not find a single thing about this floating around the internet, so if anyone knows this, please do tell me. Alien Skulls in Shangri-La. In Shangri-La, there can be oddly shaped skulls that can be seen around the map. The skulls do not appear to be human shaped at all and don't really seem to be any kind of animal either, so are these aliens? There is a very deep rabbit hole to dive down in with this and it is really interesting but it would take way too long to explain in this video. Zombies Chronicles is canon. So it seems to be heavily implied that Zombies Chronicles is in fact canon and the community has thought this ever since it released. The maps in it have slight differences as well as radios from Dr. Monty himself saying some interesting things about how our characters have been to places we have never seen them before until now in Chronicles. Clues like these is what makes it very apparent that this is indeed canon. O Custom fake sub count. O Custom is a zombies YouTuber and I guess people thought that his sub count wasn't genuine. I could not find a thing on this. Lex's Ukrainian origins. Lex apparently said a while back that he is Ukrainian and can also speak it. He hasn't mentioned it much since really besides a reference or two about 
about it, but other than that, not much is known. Tough Brew. This was a cut perk from the map Ascension, and the only thing that is known about Tough Brew is that Nikolai refers to this perk going down like glue. Much like what he says about PhD Flopper. Zombie Horse in Transit. When Black Ops 2 was on its way to release, the voice actor of Woods from the Black Ops 1 campaign said that in the Transit reveal trailer, he could see something off in the distance that looked like some kind of zombie horse. The community really believed this, especially since it was coming from such a respected Call of Duty icon, but this wasn't true. Raygun Mark II in Black Ops 1. Could not find anything about this, but I'm sure there's a mod for it or something. Purpose of the Spires. The Spires are what the goal of the Victus Crew easter eggs were about, and were used so that Maxis could harvest energy from the ether and take Richtofen out of power. When this is done, the crew go back to the beginning, so the question is, why did the spires matter? Katana in Black Ops 2. I couldn't find anything about this, no matter how hard I looked, I just could not find a single thing. However, there is a Katana in Black Ops 3 multiplayer and zombies, if that's of any consolation. Icarus piloted by Primus. I couldn't find anything on this either, but I'm guessing this is due to the sightings of Icarus, which is the plane in Mob of the Dead, can be seen around Black Ops 3 zombies maps, such as Shadows of Evil and the giant. There is no evidence for this that I can find since the explanation for this is that Icarus is going around traveling through different rifts. PhD 27. Once again, I just can't find anything about this. Maybe it's just some kind of version of PhD flopper, I don't know. Plane Route B. This was the same as the bus Route B from Transit, but with the plane Icarus from Mob of the Dead that takes players to pack a bunch. Much like bus route B in transit, this wasn't real. <laughs> what actually happened to Liam? Liam Winter stopped doing zombies on YouTube for a little while, if I remember correctly. As to why, I think it was just burnout, but I think that's about it. The kids aren't German. I take it this is from the American sounding Samantha and Eddie from Origins. For some reason, Black Ops 1 and World at War Samantha spoke with a German accent, but in Black Ops 2, she has an American accent along with Eddie when he appears. Peers. So would it have been like this with the rest of the kids? Tunguska event. So on June 30th, 1908, there was a loud explosion that could be heard at a large forest in Siberia. Turns out that there was a giant meteor that broke into pieces with one of them landing in the forest. In the map Shinonuma, there is chalk writing on the wall that will say, power will destroy you, Tunguska. In the zombies version of this event, the meteor is what contained element 115 and was the first place the element even appeared, which is why Group 935 set up a base there. Zombies wasn't supposed to ship. The COD Zombies game mode wasn't supposed to even launch back in 2008. It was just a small idea for an extra game mode that wasn't really gonna go anywhere. Mark Lamia, the studio head, was not gonna let this ship, but stuck with it, and here we are. Black Ops 4 budget cut. Due to the overall failure of Black Ops 4 and its decline over time, zombies cutscenes and maps felt like they had way less effort put into them. For example, all maps being remakes and the cutscenes that stopped being 3D rendered. This is speculated to be because of budget cuts since Black Ops 4 stopped being financially successful to Treyarch and Activision, as well as other budget being put into their newest game, Black Ops Cold War. Hence why the finale of zombies turned out the way it did. Round 256. In Black Ops 3, when round 256 was reached, the game would crash completely due to what we can assume to be technical issues. This was a really weird one to me, it's like a cursed round. The Dark Aether doesn't exist. This is some pretty deep zombies lore and could easily merit its own video, but in short, the Dark Aether in COD Zombies was eventually used as a realm to keep the Apothecons in where creation cannot happen. But however, in Zombies, we have always been led to believe that the Dark Aether has been corrupting 
being what we perceive as the light ether, that being the house and Monty's perfect world. So it brings some to assume, does the dark ether even exist? Yeah, I know it's a still complicated, but it's, it's interesting, however. Now that Cold War Zombies has released, though, this clearly isn't true, and this theory has now been debunked. Jason Blundell was fired. During Black Ops 4 Zombies, Jason Blundell had mysteriously stopped making announcements and showing up in upcoming Zombies DLC videos and events in general, and overall was just not appearing. Blundell eventually left Treyarch when Black Ops 4 Zombies went downhill, and remember, he was the lead director of Zombies at that time, which was not only strange that he mysteriously disappeared for a while, but it was also kind of concerning. This led many people to ask if he was fired. Activision said he wasn't fired, but not everyone believes this. Whatever it is that Blundell goes on to do now, I really hope that he gets the fulfillment that he deserves. J.R. Rizzo age. I'm guessing this is because no one can really tell how old he is, and I'm pretty sure that this is a meme, but I couldn't really find anything concrete about it. Ether Chaos Connection. People seem to think that the Ether and Chaos stories slash universes are connected, but Craig Houston himself has said that they are not, and besides gameplay features like wall weapons and perks, which don't even count, they really aren't. Die Rise intentionally bad. Once again, could not find anything. I think this means that Die Rise was bad, so either people would appreciate Transit more due to its failure, or to boost sales for DLC 2, since people want something other than those two maps. Black Ops and Modern Warfare storylines connected. This isn't true at all and was merely just for fun, however, something interesting from Infinity Ward as a small nod to Black Ops Zombies were the teddy bears that are in Modern Warfare 3, and there is even one in Modern Warfare 2019. Easter eggs in World at War. World at War Zombies has smaller easter eggs like the songs that you can activate and also radios, one that plays songs in Nacht and also the others that give you the story info. But however, World at War does also have a mini easter egg quest on Doris. There is a small quest you can activate which initiates a game of hide and seek with Samantha and upon completion, the player gets an achievement. So it's safe to say that the concept of easter egg quests probably were an idea and they wanted to try these small things out here and so they did it in Doris. Unsolvable ciphers. There are many zombie ciphers that have been cracked by some real talented people in the community, but however, there are still a handful of ciphers that have not even been solved. Now, Jason Blundell has always said that these ciphers have really good information about the story in them, but what information do they contain exactly? Whatever it is in those ciphers, it's probably very juicy stuff. All you have to do is solve them. Good luck. Hidden Perma Perks Back in Black Ops 2 Zombies, there was a strange hidden perk system that granted the player secret perks, which was indicated by a green flash when it was activated. These perks carried over for a few matches and could then be regained once they're gone. One example of these perks is the PhD Flopper one. The best way to get this is by going to the top of the stairs on Buried and then just jumping off and constantly taking fall damage, but not downing. Do this in of times and you'll be able to use PhD for a few matches. And there are many more of these and I do believe that these only work on the Victus maps. Shangri-La Baby Gun Alternatives. Upon looking this up, I could not find a single thing, so I'm guessing that they were going to put something else in instead of the Shangri-La Wonder Weapon. Dr. Monty is the Shadow Man. Back in Black Ops 3, there was a whole lot of speculation that maybe the Shadow Man and Dr. Monty are one in the same. This is a really interesting theory, but however, despite a few small similarities between the two, there is nothing to go off of, and on top of that, the Shadow Man was trapped in the summoning key, whilst Dr. Monty did his own thing in his perfect world, making this not true. Satan controls the zombies. In Mob of the Dead, the zombies' eye colours are different, meaning someone or something is controlling them. Due to the hellish, satanic imagery and overall feel of 
of Mob of the Dead, it became a logical theory that the devil himself was actually in control. And as far as I'm aware, this old theory has not even been debunked. Dr. Salim. Dr. Salim was a minor antagonist in Black Ops 3's campaign. It seemed like he could have played a role in Zombies, but he never ended up doing that. I never played the Black Ops 3 campaign, so I don't know how it's pronounced, which I'll take as a win, okay? Black Ops 3's campaign was ass. <laughs> Azora is actually dead. When Azora stopped uploading from his channel and eventually deleted it, it became a meme that he died, but when he didn't return after quite some time, there were some people who thought, well, is he actually dead? This was more of an ongoing joke anyway, but he's okay luckily and is back in the community and streams on Twitch. Maxis isn't real. In the Origins cutscene when Rick Toffen is getting Maxis's brain, could that body not be the real one? If so, this means that when Maxis's brain in the drone went to the house, the question can be asked, did Monty put his brain in his body or something? Which would then mean Maxis isn't real, but I doubt this is true. 116. I found nothing for this, but element 116 in Zombies could be a 115 alternative maybe? Mephistopheles is the Shadow Man. Mephistopheles is a demon from an old German legend in which a man named Faust, if that's how it's pronounced, was very unsatisfied with his life and wanted to make a change. This eventually exacerbates and he makes a deal with the devil in which he sells his soul in exchange for unlimited knowledge and luxurious pleasures. So with the demonic presence the Shadow Man has in the zombie story, he seems very similar to Mephistopheles since he can collect souls and promise the Shadows of Evil crew a chance of redemption and then he goes back on it. I think there are some good similarities here. We also know that Jason Blundell really likes his folklore. Moon modelled after real Area 51. On Moon, you spawn in Area 51 before you actually go to the Moon. Some fun and light-hearted speculation leads to wondering, is this section of the map modelled after the real Area 51? Exo Zombies made by Treyarch. Whilst this is completely false, it could be possible that Treyarch may have helped slightly with Exo Zombies. It's not uncommon for other Call of Duty studios to work together with one another when making a new game. Apothecons stolen from Lovecraft. I think the word stolen is a very harsh and unnecessary phrase to use in this situation. A lot of the Apothecons and many other ether creatures in the Zombies lore and gameplay are very heavily inspired by Lovecraftian designs. JFK voices himself. Um, Nikolai is Chernov's brother. This was an old theory that went round that states that Private Chernov in the World at War campaign is Nikolai's brother, purely because they share the same character model. However, when the Zombies timeline came out, it stated that on December the 9th, 1942, Nikolai's brother was killed in the Battle of Stalingrad. Private Chernov died in Berlin, 1945. Blackout unites all timelines. This is technically true due to all of the Zombies characters from different timelines being able to mix, but this isn't actually canon. Blundell is Milo's uncle, one of the stronger zombies memes in the community. This was made due to the good relationship that Blundell and Milo, aka Mr. Waffles, had and how they are both storyline buffs, as well as their several meetups. Overall, an S tier meme. Venus Cipher. There are many zombie ciphers, but there are some that really do stick out to be quite bizarre. One example being the infamous Venus Cipher. It reads, October NSA report. They found the source on Venus, beginning extraction. This is a very vague cipher, and we've usually only ever had theories about Mars, making this very strange. This to me has to be one of the more interesting things on this iceberg, because seriously, what the hell does this mean? Hopefully we'll have the answer to that one day. Reverse timelines. I looked this up, I did some digging to try and find something about reverse timelines, but I came back empty handed. Ted real prototype. Ted is the mad lad himself who drives the transit bus. You know that robot guy that just kicks you off the bus when you keep knifing him? Yeah, him. I couldn't see anything about a real prototype, but however, I can assume that this is talking about Ted's original 
original design before he got disfigured from the blast. If you look on the transit loading screen, you can actually see a picture of the bus station before the rockets hit the moon. On the side of the station, there is a sign with an image of a bus and a man in a bus driver's uniform. This could easily be Ted before his face got melted off due to the uniform and similar facial structure. I think this is perfectly plausible. Zombies hype was artificial. I believe this was the fake easter eggs that were made and all of the super easter eggs and just other things like that to create hype for something that simply isn't real. Don't be fooled, there are many fake easter eggs and hoaxes such as leaks that create artificial hype. TGR is a dev. The Gaming Revolution is a zombies youtuber who leaks new info about the latest zombies news and COD games in general. Due to his strangely specific leaks, it was speculated that he was a dev. This most likely isn't true. Ultimus didn't matter. There was a cipher saying that Ultimus will prevail, which with the ending we got to zombies, it feels as if they didn't really amount to anything. Group 601. There is a strange group called Group 601, where their logo can be seen on a World at War loading screen on Darius. The logo can also be seen in game file images and also several Black Ops 3 campaign missions. It has been speculated that Group 601 could be an early version of Broken Arrow, or maybe it was a placeholder name for Group 935. Samantha in COD Ghosts. In Extinction, there is a character named Samantha. No relation. Dead Ops 3. Dead Ops Arcade is back and the third installment of it is found in Cold War and it's the rise of Mamabak. It's pretty fun. If you've been avoiding it in Cold War, just go and play it. It's a good time. Zombies earns more than multiplayer. In Black Ops 3, I can believe this due to Zombies Chronicles being the most sold DLC of 2017. But other than that, I would say most of the COD player base is all for the multiplayer. Meaning that Treyarch probably earn way more money from the multiplayer side of things. Real Hitler boss. It's still not true. Unless maybe on the newest zombies map, if you get to a certain round, just maybe, maybe Black Ops DS is canon. This one is a joke. Black Ops Zombies on DS is not canon. Thank the Lord. Mob of the Dead happened in real life. The events of Mob of the Dead didn't happen IRL, but however, the boys at Treyarch did take a trip over to Alcatraz prison to be able to get it very accurate and I've got to be honest they did a very good job. Many of the rooms look identical to actual Alcatraz but it does have that zombies magic sprinkled over it that we all love. Dr. Monty is Weasel. This is another Mob of the Dead theory that claims that Weasel broke the cycle in the map and he didn't die like we thought but in fact came back as Dr. Monty. He used ideas from the comics that he would draw to make the perks and everything else we see. And then Weasel goes on to help others break the cycle. Whilst the characters do have similar faces and it's fun to think about, this most likely isn't really true due to how far-fetched it seems. The giant cut easter egg. This is a theory that actually does make some sense. With the style that Black Ops 3 had, it wouldn't be surprising to believe that the giant had an easter egg which could have been about fixing the robot that is broken down outside of the map. This is because of the Der Eisendracker intro where it seems like our characters come out of the robot that was shot down. Almost as if they were controlling the robot. Jason Blundell never left. This claims that Jason Blundell never left Treyarch. This isn't plausible since it is proven that he's gone. The kids are in control. In the Origins ending, we see that the children in the house, more specifically Samantha and Eddie, they're playing with what looks like statues or board game pieces, and essentially making up the ending, meaning that if we apply this logic to the map, then this leads us to believe that Sammy has control and so does Eddie, since Samantha said it is his turn to play next, and so do the rest of the children, probably. I've always been pretty certain that they are not fully in control, but how much power do they have? Last Gen Season Pass. When Black Ops 3 released on PS4 and Xbox One, Treyarch also released released it on the last gen consoles, which were the PS3 and Xbox 360. This monstrosity of a game was comically bad, and when I say this, I mean everything looked like someone regurgitated
hated Play-Doh three times. Many memes came from this since it was just so bad, and the most notable being last gen Richtofen. As to where the season pass for this game comes into the equation, well, it doesn't. This was a slap in the face for people who wanted to buy the season pass but couldn't on the last gen consoles. The cherry on top of this here is that the giant also wasn't available. Bots pre Black Ops 4. Not too sure what this is talking about since bots in Zombies were new with Black Ops 4. The real DLC 5. Maybe Zombies Chronicles wasn't meant to be the original plan. However, the only thing I could find on this is a video literally called The Real DLC 5 Zombies by the one and only JC Backfire, where him, Liam for the Winter, Mr. T Lex Fi, and Azora play Left 4 Dead 2 and make jokes about it being. DLC 5. World War 2 was actually good. Okay, don't worry, not real World War 2. <laughs> it's talking about World War 2 Zombies, which was a real mixed bag for me personally. In all honesty, I can understand why people think that this is an underdog Zombies mode. Jack's dead sister. Back in the wonderful year of 2013, Lonely Mailbox, aka Jack, stopped making videos for a while with no explanation given, and as a result, people started to think that for some reason, his sister died and he needed to take a break, but later on in a Q&A, he clarified that she is alive and well. Z House 3. The Z House was easily one of the best times in the Zombies community and was a huge part of the golden era of this mode. It was a group of Zombies creators which involved Mr. T Lexify, Lonely Mailbox, MC Sportshawk, Chucky and The Smith. Plays. After two amazing years of the Z House, there was never a third. It seems like most of them would be down for it, but it's just a big thing and life is so busy, leading us to believe that a third Z House isn't really gonna happen anytime soon. Oh man, I, I can't believe I have to read this next one out loud. Takio raped by a spider. I really did shake my head at this at first and honestly was expecting some nightmare inducing Rule 34 to show up, so I did the brave thing of searching this up, and it turns out that The Gaming Revolution did a whole in-depth video about the map Zetsubo no Shima and goes into full detail about the spiders and their Lovecraftian inspiration and about Takio 1.0 in the map. What is interesting though is that the versions of the spiders in Zetsubo in the Lovecraftian lore states that these bastards are nearly extinct and they are not the best at mating with other spiders. So their ingenious solution to this is to capture human males, take them over to their nest, and unwillingly mate with them. Takio 1.0 in the map is taken to the mother spider's nest. I'm just gonna let you think about that one. It's dumb, but let's not act like it doesn't make sense. There's only one Richtofen. Whilst this doesn't make much sense, since we have seen multiple Richtofens on screen, that all play essential roles in the story, and we even know that there are multiple Richtofens in multiple universes, and even in the same universe. I think the Blood of the Dead Richtofen that claimed he was the nicest one could have been the original one though, since he probably had a lot of time to reflect and change for the better. Revelation's second ending. In the game files, there was an encrypted cutscene that seemed to be some kind of alternate ending for Revelations. Turns out that it's completely gone now. It ended up just being an encrypted Shadows of Evil intro cutscene. Now if that doesn't define anticlimactic, I don't know what will. Story is based off of fan theories. I feel like this one is one of those things that people think about at one point or another, since many fan theories in Zombies lay out a lot of potential for the story. But I think it's safe to say that this is false. Points are 115. In COD Zombies, it is actually possible to get 150 
15 points. The most common way to do this would be to go prone in front of the perk machine when you'd be on World at War and you would get 25 points. So all you would have to do is get 90 points and then the perk change and there you would have it. The other thing that this could mean is that the points you get are some sort of 115 energy. Kustova Posten. I really hope I got that right. In the moon radio we hear a conversation between Dr. Grof and Dr. Schuster. They're talking about their experiments on moon at Griffin Station just before Samantha is teleported to the moon. Dr. Schuster. The tanks are full and the shields are down. The machinery is humming nicely. Dr. Grof. Good, but what of the shipment? Dr. Schuster. Most are buried outside of the base. The live ones we've sent back to Kustover Posten. Dr. Grof. Excellent. Then there is nothing left but to wait for Dr. Richtofen's return. It seems like they're preserving live subjects until they are needed at a place called Kustover Posten. When translated, it means custodian post, and custodian means a person who has a responsibility for taking care or protecting something. So it seems like Kustover Posten may be some sort of waiting prison or concentration camp for these subjects to wait until they are needed. Custom maps are canon. I'm really hoping that this one is a joke. <laughs> Zombies was planned in COD 2. Whilst I feel like this may have some merit to it, Zombies was a sudden burst of creativity that happened on complete accident. Maybe the idea had been floating around, but no one acted on it, but this is false. There's only one timeline. Before the official timeline was released, we would just assume that the events of Zombies took place in one single timeline, but however, that is not the case. It is actually split into three timelines that end up making one huge timeline. Richtofen was a real doctor. There was no actual Nazi scientist named Richtofen who sounded like Nolan North, but however, Nazi scientists would cross some very inhumane lines just to get some results. Some of these horrible people who were just as crazy as Ultimus Richtofen were Hans Eppinger, Josef Mengel, and Sigmund Rashter. These were all real Nazi scientists who did very awful experiments. It wouldn't surprise me if Ultimus Optimus Richtofen was based off of these kind of people and probably many more. Johnny J did do a video on this where he explains it way more in depth, so if you're interested then go and check it out. Just make sure you finish this video first. There is no super easter egg. Whilst it is a common belief that maybe there is a super easter egg hiding out there in Black Ops 3 or Black Ops 4 zombies somewhere, maybe the answer to our question is much more simple and there is in fact no no super easter egg. The Order. The Order is a cull in the Chaos storyline which are the ones responsible for the creation of the zombies and the abduction of Scarlet's father. They are the main antagonists of that story and seek power through knowledge. They appear on the maps Voyage of Despair, Nine, Dead of the Night and Ancient Evil. I feel like this is so low on the iceberg since not many people were as interested in this group when the Chaos storyline started. Playable Paris Map. In Instead of Moon for Black Ops 1 for the final DLC, we were originally gonna have a map that's set in Paris, which would have been amazing, but however it got scrapped and we were blessed with Moon. As for the map being playable, I'm sure there's a custom map out there somewhere. Nazi Occultism in World War 2 Zombies Nazi Occultism is a very speculated topic around them and is one of the many inspirations for a lot of sci-fi media and things like Call of Duty Zombies. The Nazis may have tried to make zombies of some sort, maybe not to the degree that we witness in COD, but maybe some super soldiers that act like them and are just as aggressive. There were horrible Nazi experiments that happened and for all we know, some even more horrible occult stuff may have been lost. I would say you see the most of this in World War II zombies. This is a huge rabbit hole to dive into with a huge amount of speculation and lots of theories. The cycle was never completed. 
weird. I think this is suggesting that the characters never actually made it to Revelations, which isn't true since we know that the cycle was completed as it was written in the timeline. Maybe this is saying that our characters would have never been able to complete it due to circumstances that may have happened in another universe, such as Monty never interfering or Primus never meeting in 1918 France. Obviously we have seen the cycle completed, but this is fun to think about. Fortnite copied zombies. I guess they did this with the Fortnite Mares event. <laughs> Dark Ether storylines. The Dark Ether is one of the most mysterious parts of COD Zombies history. It's said to be a dimension that is below creation and in Tagda Toten, the whole of the multiverse was banished here. The storyline for Black Ops called War Zombies takes on a more main focus of the Dark Ether, and we play as the Requiem Strike Team and follow Samantha as we uncover more about the Dark Ether. Crazy Rabbit's real hate crimes. This this simply isn't true and I'm sure this one is a joke. Crazy Rabbit jokes about committing hate crimes but he wouldn't actually ever do anything like that. real Nazi experiments. So one question that is on mine and probably everyone else's minds is did the Nazis actually do experiments and try to make zombies or anything similar? The answer to this is that we actually don't know for sure. It definitely seems like something that they probably would have done but there are no records of them ever trying to reanimate a corpse. However it is definitely possible that they did or at least tried to and it was lost. But whilst that is up for speculation speculation, here's something that is actually true. The Nazis did use drugs such as meth and cocaine on a lot of Nazi soldiers to make them more alert and aggressive, whilst not really all that conscious, much like a zombie. Bible predicts zombie storyline. Nope. World at War is MK Ultra. MK Ultra was a CIA mind control and hypnosis experiment that tried getting information from human subjects. This kind of work began in World War II and was continued later on in 1953. Maybe if you look hard enough in Zombies or even the campaign, there may be some references to MK Ultra. but as to World at War actually being MK Ultra, I'm not sure what this means. The last easter egg. One day, there is gonna be one last easter egg. It will either be one of the best easter eggs of all time, or one of the worst, but until that day we find out, we can only imagine what it could be. Activision Cooperator of the New World Order. Don't don't sue me Activision, this is all just fun speculation. Maybe the microtransactions that the recent COD games have been riddled with are Activision playing a part in the New World Order. Yeah, I couldn't find much else on this. Jason Blundell assassinated. For a brief period in Black Ops 4, there was a time where Jason Blundell made absolutely zero appearances for any trailers or reveals. For a fun session of tinfoil hat time, maybe he was assassinated and then replaced? Lee Ross is CIA. Yeah, I, I really don't know what the end of this iceberg has become. The only thing I could find for this is that I think there was an actual CIA agent called Lee Ross, which was a funny coincidence. Maybe Lee Ross left Infinity Ward to become an agent. And now for the final entry of the iceberg. We are all part of a greater cycle. I think this one is very interpretive. You could say that we are part of a cycle in the sense that we wake up and do the same things day in day out and our lives can feel like a cycle and just repeat themselves too much. The cycle can be broken by changing the things we do for the better and doing new things which the last part is something I feel as though Treyarch may have been saying at the end of Tagda Toten. I mean we hear what our characters want to do with their lives almost like they're moving on but not in a bad way. It's more of a nice thing and that's okay. We are done. The iceberg is finally done. This has taken me so damn long. I think it got left off at a very nice uh, comforting note, you know, a very uh, thought-provoking feel at the end there. And this iceberg, can I just say, was amazing to cover. I have enjoyed doing it so much. And I want to give another huge shout out to the Reddit user Smart Newbie for making this iceberg. I really do want to thank Mishkoz and Sunflower for really inspiring 
inspiring me to do this iceberg. And I hope that if you've made it this far, you've got a really good glimpse as to how just complex Call of Duty Zombies can be. Seriously, compared to other icebergs, this is one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. And if you're still here, then thank you so much from the absolute bottom of my heart. This has been more of a passion project than anything else. I really wanted to make something that I'm proud of, and this iceberg list documentary, if you will, has really been a pleasure to make. And I hope that you got some enjoyment just by watching this. But anyways, I'm gonna leave this video here today. If you enjoyed, be sure to smash the like button, comment your favourite thing on this iceberg, or anything that got left out of here, because I wouldn't mind making a follow-up video about some of the stuff that I feel should have been on this iceberg. And most importantly, subscribe to the channel. If you like Call of Duty Zombies and Minecraft, then this is the place to be. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time.